Hey folks, welcome to the Dual Swords basics, guides, I guess? So let's talk about identity of the Dual Swords first. In my opinion, Dual Swords, while it has a very limited moveset, is phenomenal at parrying and just playing very defensively in general. So there's a lot of different tools that you have at your disposal, but fortunately there's also abilities like God of Wind, which kind of take the cake for bread and butter. So yeah, Dual Swords, in my opinion, are very defensive, even more so than the sword. But they can also be stupidly powerful with buffs like Mind's Eye, which is 80% extra melee damage <laughs> if you pull it off. So I'll, I'll talk about this in a moment. But let's focus on the bread and butter of Dual Swords and how you can work with it. Alright, so again, very defensive. Um, this idea is supported by a few things. One, the block stat is actually pretty high. So yeah, keep that in mind. Pretty high block stat compared to other weapons. So treat this very defensively. You got a bunch of parries. But let's start with the first ability that is important to understand, which is God of Wind 3. So what does that look like? Right over here. This thing. So naturally you're going to want to understand the timing for this, how to pull it off. Um, getting God of Wind 2 is pretty easy, but getting the correct timing in God of Wind 3 can feel a little nutty at first. But if you can work with this, then you'll be good to go. So what exactly is this timing? Because normally just God of Wind, if you're just mashing triangle as I was just now, you're always going to get this. So what's the correct time to press triangle? So you can see I'm kind of doing it here, but what am I looking for? What's a good point for me to work with? So let's break down the kick portion of it because you only have to press triangle an extra time. All right. So you can see... My character is kicking, so I want to press triangle in anticipation for, uh, in anticipation of the kick basically hitting the final point before it starts dropping down. All right, I want to hit triangle in anticipation of that. So really, what am I going to look for in terms of the kick? Well, let's break it down. All right, so my advice would be, when the kick is probably about midway. That's generally when you want to start pressing the triangle. So let's see if it works, if I can do it from here. Nope, too slow. So let's be a little earlier. I would say on close inspection... Do I press it? Pretty early, actually. So let me try that again. So I probably press triangle right as the kick, or I try to not land the triangle press, but start like priming myself to press it so like my reaction time so to speak so when i see the kick maybe the highest at this point so just like just when the kick starts coming out then i try to press triangle so that when i the hit actually gets registered by the game it's basically at this point all right so if you press triangle when the kick's basically finished then you're messed up Alright, you don't want the kick to finish. You want it to be so that you press a triangle and perfectly sync it so as the kick is just about to finish. So yeah, try that on for size. It will take practice. It's okay to be a little earlier. But, and then slowly just delay it until you find the time. Alright, now why is God of Wind 3 so good? What makes this the bread and butter ability? Well, here, let me just show you. Heavy stagger! Look at that! A lot of key damage as well. I mean, I am using a corrupted weapon against an enemy. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, heavy stagger is not to be underestimated. It's one of the few abilities in the game that kind of does this. And yeah, you can kind of loop too. So that's pretty nuts. Let me demonstrate the key damage against a Yoki as well. Alright, come on. Okay, great. Perfect. Decent amount of key damage. Not a bad amount of key damage. Keep in mind, the things that do more max key damage are like Yokai abilities, alright? So it's pretty awesome. It's a move you can use and works for just about any scenario. It's pretty fast. It does a good amount of damage. 
and it's overall a, one of the safer moves. Now another move that you should start getting used to is Sign of the Cross, which isn't a surprise because it's really fast. Now with Ultimate Sign of the Cross, or as I jokingly say, Sign of the Cross 3, you've got an additional toolkit to mess with enemies. So let's just show you how fast you can chain Sign of the Cross. That was a poor example. But with Sheath Cancels, you can be pretty nutty. And then what's nice is that with uh, Sign of the Cross 2, sorry, with Ultimate Sign of the Cross, it actually has remarkably good tracking too. So even if I get behind an enemy, I will basically swivel back. Demonstrate. They hit him pretty good. And they recently boosted its damage, so it's pretty good. And with sheep cancels, it's extra silly. But it's honestly not that necessary. But yeah, super fast. Gotta win, sign of the cross. Kind of your bread and butter. Um, one weakness for the dual swords, in my opinion, is the running attacks and dodge attacks. They're not as impressive as the swords, but you can use them. I would say that the evasion attack going into God of Wind and mid stance is pretty nice. Of course, with pre-shifting, it's kind of the same. And with pre-shifting, you can do some pretty fun things as well. Um, one cool little dodge attack I like to do is as follows. So dodge back, strong, strong. This looks kind of cool to me. Let's just show you how effective it is against a Yoki. Not bad. Got a wind. You sign of the cross to kind of move. Ow. All right, what you got? You're not too bad. Yeah, try that on for size. Those are really important. Now let's talk about other moves, since I think it's really important to understand them. So, what else with God of Wind? So there are quite a few, actually not that many abilities. There isn't the most option for customization. Um, I think though we can briefly talk about abilities like Water Sword. These are kind of obvious. You can trap an enemy in a corner. Need to try to inflict a status ailment real quickly. Use Water Sword, pretty easy. Just hold it in high stands, boom, power. Great. Uh, Mortal Flaw, I'll talk about in a moment. A Windstorm is a little interesting. Windstorm is actually really good for horn breaks. Let me demonstrate. Done. That was not Windstorm. <laughs> Let me try that again. Windstorm's really good for horn breaks and also does a good amount of break key damage. So enemies are blocking. Great time to punish. Great, huh? So that's pretty rad. Key damage wise, it's okay. Not the best. But really good for enemies that block. Uh, they actually had to nerf it uh, in Neil 1 because it was that ridiculous. So Windstorm is quite nice. Let's get a let's demonstrate this against a human opponent. Start to get them blocking. Please start blocking. Not the most key damage. Alright, please, please lose your key, and then let's get you back to full key. Alright, you done? No, no! You 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 need to cooperate, buddy. Look at that! Boosh! Broke that key. Really good at that. Alright, so that's generally how I like to use Windstorm. Other abilities to take advantage of, and I will, uh, let's discuss... We've got the high stance combo unders of Cherry Blossom and Spinning Dragon. So I've been using Spinning Dragon lately because it's a lot of fun. But what's Cherry Blossom good for? Cherry Blossom has 
ridiculously good tracking. And does a modest amount of damage as well. See? It's not the best, but it's pretty good. Oh, really? Jerk! Fine. You know what? Present. So let's demonstrate the value of Cherry Blossom. Focus Horn. Really nice. A lot of vertical attacks. And does a pretty good amount of damage. Get you done. So yeah, I like Spinning Dragon, it's fairly quick. Sorry, Cherry Blossom. <laughs> I'm bad. Now you may ask, well what about Spinning Dragon? Since many players, many players actually don't like Spinning Dragon, I love it. Because this is really cool. But it also has a really long downtime. You may ask, how am I going to be able to pull that off? And doesn't it just kind of like miss enemies because it has so much forward motion? And you would you may not be surprised all right whoa i actually avoided that here's something cool you can do with spinning dragon good for far away engagements and i've actually broken horns with it let's see if i can pull it off oh uh, no luck there it works on taller targets oh look at that i went under an enemy don't underestimate forward motion ever All right, you don't always have to go for the Neo version. You can go for the Ninja Gaiden version. This is the Ninja Gaiden version. No follow-up. With the follow-up, that's the Neo version. Talk about upgrading a move. So, okay, there is now a new ability to work with, Winter Wind. So this is basically a way to extend attacks can do a quick little see if I can show it. You do a quick little sweep, you see that? It's so fast it's hardly noticeable. But what this can allow you to do is to chain attacks in almost the same vein you might feel works for weapons like the fists. So here, I'll just show you something that's kinda cheap. I'm gonna do low stance quick into winter winds, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, that feels kind of dumb, doesn't it? So... Whee! You can do this after all sorts of abilities. You can extend things as you see fit. So yeah, also, one interesting thing with Winter Wind that you may not know about, all right, so let me purposely deplete my key, is that you can actually flux to after it. All right, so let's let's demonstrate this. You can flux to after it. Oh so, yeah, that's a pretty good way to not only get a little more pressure out of your situation, but also get some more key. So let's do God of Wind into Winter Winds. Yeah, pretty rad. So yeah, don't underestimate the value of Winter Wind. really good combo extender and you can do all sorts of fancy things so i know i started showcasing some other things so one of the new abilities uh, that was introduced in neo 2 is dual dragon this competes with god of wind i personally like to just have god of wind in mid stance because dual dragon is so fun 
Now, one of the obvious things that you can do with this, well, maybe not the most obvious, is simply hop over opponents. That is something that is awesome. Don't underestimate abilities that have, even if they have low damage, because they got high mobility. And look at that, I can break its horn too. And get right behind him. Oh, I, I, I whiffed that. But eventually, you can start making it so you can get right behind an enemy. And avoid all sorts of attacks. Look at that. Avoided. And so then they have to reposition. Oh, so cool. Wee. Ah, oh, it takes some practice to nail this, but I have actually seen it used against enemies like Ryo Minsokuna, who I know I haven't fought in the main game yet. Come on, do a burst attack. I want to really nail the... I want to nail it. Come on. I've seen it used to avoid all sorts of sweeps. Avoided the kick. Wasn't that cool? So yeah, you can avoid that. Go into Sign of the Cross 2, get to God of Wind, screw it up because I can. Oh yeah, another use for Spinning Dragon, enemies who like to back dodge a lot, well guess what, now you can catch them off guard. Really cool. Don't forget, if you don't like the animation downtime, always got Soul Course to cancel, but I'm leaving that out because that's a pretty uh, hefty degree, a variable to consider. But yeah, so those are a few things that you can work with. And let's see what else. We've got Raijin, which I do need to touch upon. Raijin does have a very long charge time, but it can be very powerful for, and you might have guessed it, hitting enemies in, in a way that avoids them at the same time. This is a very high skill maneuver. Look at that. Oh, I took advantage of it. Come on, you have to, you cannot deny that was cool. Difficult, yes, but super awesome. Of course, something that will require a lot of time and mastery, but it is so good. You don't always have to go for the full charge. And see, I could, I even used it to manipulate my position so I could get right into the Phantom Burst counter. Wasn't that cool? Dual Dragon just single-handedly avoided that entire attack. I just did Dual Dragon, I even he had to circle me. Look at that, again? Like, come on, that's awesome. That's the type of new gameplay we all love. But all right, now let me show you something else with Low Stance. So I know I had talked about Mind's Eye, right? Mind's Eye basically allows you to kind of screw up your dodges. Now, when should you dodge in order to get advantage of this? Basically, you want to dodge a little earlier than you're comfortable with. See that? I dodged a little earlier than I was comfortable with and I got the dodge. It felt like, oh god, I'm taking a huge risk. And I was, I just dodged into it. So it takes some practice, but you can manage it. So dodge a little earlier than you're comfortable with. Because yeah, the iframes, you, you gotta like... Ah, see I'm dodging on point, so it makes it difficult. But it's really valuable with like... Dang it, I should try to dodge into it. Nope, and I just straight up avoided it. You gotta get hit during it too. Come on. Don't, don't try with grabs. Son of a biscuit, come on. It's very tricky, but unlike big AoEs, it's pretty easy to sync up stuff. But you, you can kind of get away with dodging a little earlier. <laughs> come on, big AoE slam, I like it. Yeah, I didn't actually get hit. When your dodge game is too good. Come on. 
<laughs> Come on, do the burst attack. I can do that one. Ta-da! For me, those predictable attacks aren't too bad. Especially when they have a large hitbox. I'm like, alright, I'm just gonna dodge a little bit more. A little earlier than I would like. And then you know you're gonna get hit and you can kind of plan it. One more time, please. I dodged it on point. <laughs> Screw you, man. Screw you. Take all my frustration out on you. I don't care. Just die. Okay. Mind's Eye will admittedly take some practice, and I have a little trouble with it, but there are definitely many scenarios in which you can eventually get really good at proccing the ability, which makes it so awesome. But alright. Um, let's see what else I can talk about before I kind of leave it for a bit, because I know I kind of threw a good amount of information for you. So, Moonshadow is really good against any enemies that block, because the follow-up ability does a massive amount of break key damage. It's really good about that. So, when you just get blocked, now you kind of have two options. That's not the option I was hoping for. Please start blocking me, dude! Why won't you- okay, now you block. Block me. Block me. Block me, thank you. Goodbye, key. So yeah, Moonshadow is definitely an option if you get blocked, but you can always do Winter Winds because it's an active skill and they can't really block active skills. One last thing before I think I leave it here for Dual Swords, and of course I will revisit Dual Swords because there's many things I need to discuss, such as parry timings, which I'm sure you'd want to know. But with the Dual Swords, just like with the sword, you can quick fire the sign of the cross, alright? Which is admittedly difficult. You can do stuff like this. Of course, a little difficult. You gotta be sheathed. And then you gotta hold it down for like a quick millisecond. But it's pretty rad. It's... I don't use it that often, but it can be pretty fun. You know, you can just get the quick hit off. Your shifting, of course, helps. Don't forget, Winter Winds is a great option, and so is... Yeah, so is everything else. So, you'll kind of get used to the rotation for dual swords and keeping enemies pressured and staggered. And eventually, when I get back to Dual Swords, I'll kind of teach you some of the defensive things. I know I didn't cover parries. I know I didn't really cover everything. But this should kind of give you an idea of how you can kind of speed up gameplay with the Dual Swords. Winter Winds added a ton. Raijin is a difficult ability. I know I didn't discuss Mortal Flow or Double-Headed Slice. Um, heck, even Random Slice. I know I've got all the parries to cover. But you work with this stuff and you'll generally have a pretty good edge with dual swords. One of the things I've noticed with dual swords is because of the general lack of variety in terms of movesets, it's generally one of the easier weapons to work with in pressure. And not to mention, once you get the mystic arts, even just with the stuff that I have, if you get stuff like mystic dyad for the dual swords, where you get reduced key consumption or and increased defense at the same time, even if you just have one or the other, you're kind of a powerhouse as it is. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure you can be a master of this weapon without too much time. But I'll leave this for now. And then if you want to see something uh, specific, please do leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it. But I do intend to break this again down in parts. So definitely check it out, see what you think. And yeah, let me know your feedback. And if you want me for any of the weapon guides, the uh, tinker stuff, please do let me know. In any case, I'll leave it here. Thank you guys for watching, hope this was helpful, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>